Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to cardiology lectures. I am Dr. Nick Nicka. I have been a cardiologist uh, for more than three decades at the Texas Medical Center in Houston, Texas. Uh, today we are going to learn something about basic statistics. We are going to look at the two by two contingency table and how it can help us at bedside for making decisions that can make a difference in patients' lives. So let us begin. In the morning, you, Todd, assume your name to be Todd, present a 65-year-old lady with a history of hypertension and high cholesterol who is consulted for cardiac clearance before her knee surgery. The professor asks what pre-operative test would you like to order, Todd? Todd says a regular stress test. Then the professor asks any other suggestions? Sean says no, I will order a nuclear stress test. And the professor says okay, now we have two different options. How are we going to resolve this difference? And the professor continued. Okay, here's what I'm going to do to help you determine which test is most appropriate for this patient. Todd, since you said a regular stress test, I want you to do some research on nuclear stress test. Sean, since you said nuclear stress test, I would like you to do some research on regular treadmill test in predicting the accuracy of coronary artery disease. So here is the plan. Todd, you're going to sit down with the biostatistician in our department. In our cardiac cath lab database, we have more than 10,000 patients. I would like you to look at 100 patients who had coronary artery disease documented by cardiac catheterization and also who had nuclear stress test. Then you plot the number of people who had nuclear stress test that were positive and those who had a negative stress test despite having coronary artery disease documented by cardiac catheterization. Then your second part is you're going to select 100 patients who were declared normal by cardiac catheterization. Among those patients, I need you to look at their nuclear stress test and plot how many of them had positive nuclear stress test and how many of them had negative nuclear stress test. Sean is going to do the same thing with treadmill test only. Then you both are going to come back with the results and that will help us to determine which test is more appropriate in a given patient. Okay, let us continue. Todd and Sean didn't realize what they were getting into. So they sat down with the statistician, they pre presented their variables and here's what they came up with. Now we are looking at uh, nuclear stress test. Remember this is Todd's project. Among 100 patients who had documented coronary artery disease, the nuclear stress test was positive in only 92 patients. That's kind of strange because you think the nuclear test should be so accurate, it should detect 100% of the patients with documented coronary artery disease, but none of the test is 100% sensitive. All right. The remaining eight patients had a negative nuclear stress test. That means Eight, per, eight patients who had negative nuclear stress test had documented coronary artery disease. Now let's look at 100 patients who had normal coronary arteries documented by cardiac catheterization. The nuclear stress test was positive in five of these patients where you expect them to be negative because they have normal coronaries. You don't expect the nuclear stress to be positive. Whereas the negative stress test was 90, found in 95 patients out of 100. All right, now let's try to analyze this data and see how we can statistically apply it to deciding what we need to do with patients at bedside. 
let's look at some of these numbers. Those patients who were documented to have coronary artery disease and who also had a positive stress test are called true positives. That is 92 out of 100 had both nuclear stress test and cardiac cath diagnosis of coronary artery disease. Then we have the false negative. That means even though the cardiac catheterization was positive, this nuclear stress was test said they were normal. That means these are false negative nuclear stress tests. Similarly, on this side, we have a negative nuclear stress test and a negative cardiac cath was found in 95 patients. So that is a true negative. And in this group of normal coronaries, five patients had actually positive nuclear stress tests. Okay. Let's do some more analysis of this data. Okay, we are going to come up with first sensitivity. How sensitive is the nuclear test in identifying patients with coronary artery disease? So, sensitivity is measured by taking the true positive test. That, that is, those who have documented coronary artery disease and also a positive nuclear stress test. We are going to divide the true positive number with the total number of patients in this group which gives us 92 divided by 92 plus 8 in this group 92 percent sensitive. Similarly, specificity is how accurate is the nuclear test in identifying normal coronaries that is the number of true negatives. Those patients who have normal coronaries what percentage of them have an actual negative nuclear stress test? So, we have true negatives divided by true negative plus false positive, which gives us a 95 percent specificity for this particular study group. In addition to these two numbers, we also have three other numbers we need to become familiar with. That is a positive predictive value, which is basically the true positives divided by true positive and false positive. That is, we are going across this way now for positive predictive value. So, the positive predictive value is 92 divided by 92 plus 5, which is 94 percent. Similarly, the negative predictive value of this test is uh, plotted by using the numbers going across this way in the bottom. So, we have the true negatives divided by true negative and false negative. That gives us uh, a 92 percent negative predictive value of this particular research. There is one more overall number which tells us out of these 200 patients how many patients did the nuclear stress test accurately predict whether they have coronary artery disease or they do not have coronary artery disease? That is, in this particular research, 93 percent of the time, the nuclear stress test can accurately predict whether a person has a coronary artery disease or whether the person has normal coronary arteries. Okay. That is great. So, let us look at some definitions of all these terminologies that we use. We should have had the definition before we use these terminologies, but nonetheless, we will learn the definitions. Okay. Now, I talked about the sensitivity. Sensitivity is the ability of a test to correctly identify those with the disease. In this case, the sensitivity is the ability of the nuclear stress test is to identify the number of patients in the population who have coronary artery disease. From the previous slide, we could see that sensitivity is equal to true positives divided by true positives plus false negatives that gives us a 92 percent sensitivity. That means, the nuclear stress is 92 percent sensitive in identifying those patients with actual coronary artery disease. 
this is calculated by going down this way as shown by the arrow. On the other hand, specificity is the ability of the test to correctly identify those without the disease. That is, when we do a nuclear stress test, how accurate it is in identifying those patients who have normal coronary arteries. So, in order to calculate, we go in this direction. So, true negatives divided by true negative and false positive gives us a 95 percent specificity. Let us look at other numbers. Now, we talked about the positive predictive value. The positive predictive value is calculated by dividing true positives by the sum of true positives and false positives. That gives us a positive predictive value of 94 percent. The positive predictive value is the probability that subjects with a positive screening test truly have disease. That means, 94 percent of the patients with positive nuclear stress tests have coronary artery disease. Similarly, if you look at the negative predictive value which is calculated by dividing the true negatives by the sum of true negatives and false negatives, we get 92 percent. The negative predictive value is the probability that subjects with a negative nuclear stress test truly do not have coronary artery disease or have normal coronary arteries. All right, we got all this information. Now, let us see this one more information we can calculate from this 2 by 2 contingency table and that is if we do a nuclear stress test in 100 patients with coronary artery disease and 100 patients with normal coronary arteries, how accurate is the nuclear stress test in predicting how many people have coronary artery disease and how many do not have coronary artery disease. So, in order to do that, we go across the table and add these two numbers, the true positives and the true negatives and divide that by the total population which is 200. That gives us an uh, accuracy rate of 93 percent. Now, we know that by doing a nuclear stress test, we can expect an accuracy rate of 93 percent in identifying the presence of coronary artery disease or the absence of coronary artery disease. Okay, let us continue. Now, Sean who said he was going to order a nuclear stress test, the professor gave him to do the research on a plain regular treadmill test and here is what Sean came up with. Sean came up with 100 patients who had documented coronary artery disease on cardiac cath. The regular treadmill test was positive in only 70 of them, whereas the stress test was negative in 30 patients despite them having documented coronary artery disease on cardiac catheterization. Whereas, those patients who had normal coronary arteries the stress test was positive in 40 of them. This is strange <laughs> and the stress test was negative in only 60. So, if you take the overall number, the accuracy, the accuracy of a plain treadmill test in identifying patients with coronary artery disease or with normal coronary arteries is only 65 percent. On the other hand, if you just take the sensitivity of the test, in the previous slide we saw the sensitivity was 92 percent for a nuclear stress test, but here the sensitivity is only 70 percent. It is 70 percent because we have a rounded 100 number here. Now, here are the final results. Todd who said, I just want to do a regular plain treadmill test comes back with a nuclear stress test accuracy which is 93 percent. Sean who recommended a nuclear stress test is gleeing with smile and he says the regular treadmill test has an accuracy of only 65 percent. Now, the question is 
which tests would you like to order well ladies and gentlemen i hope this has shed some light on basic statistics 101 using two by two contingency table and how we can apply that at bedside i am dr nick nickham and uh, thank you so much for uh, watching this video and, and please please do subscribe to our youtube channel and also tell your friends to subscribe to our youtube channel if you would like us to prepare a video on any particular topic of interest to you uh, please leave us some comments below and we will do the research and try to make a presentation thank you so much for watching i am dr nick nickham